Hello and welcome to lesson three of GCSE history. Today we will be looking at the conflict and tension unit of the GCSE course. So please start today's lesson by completing the knowledge quiz on the Google form. Please press pause while you complete the quiz. So today we're going to focus on the second part of paper one, which looks at the interwar period between 1918 and 1939. By examining the years between World War I and World War II, we will look at concepts such as national self-determination, so the focus on countries making their own decisions, notions of internationalism, so countries having to work together, and the challenges that came with the terms of the Treaty of Versailles and attempts to revise it. We'll look at the causes of World War II, and you'll get an understanding of why these issues were so difficult to manage and resolve and why the conflict therefore occurred. You'll also look at the role of key individuals and the role they played in shaping change, fueling tensions and influencing international relations. Now, the unit can be split into three parts. The first part focuses on the end of the war and creating peace treaties. Now, the First World War has two ends in effect. The first which ended the fighting was the armistice of the 11th of November 1918. Now this armistice agreement was a temporary truce which forced both sides to stop fighting and withdraw their troops. Now the reactions to the armistice was fairly calm. Most soldiers and countries were happy to end the fighting and it was expected that a formal peace treaty would soon be drawn up. Now the Treaty of Versailles signed in 1919 was the second end which formally and finally ended the First World War. Germany had surrendered and signed the armistice in November 1918, but the full terms of the official peace treaty were not finalised or announced until June 1919. The talks for the peace treaty were known as the Paris Peace Conference, and the treaty which dealt with Germany was called the Treaty of Versailles. Now we will look briefly at some other treaties which look uh, at the other countries that were impacted by the war and the reparations and things that they had to do as part of their punishment. But the Treaty of Versailles in itself uh, causes some conflict. Uh, people believe that the terms of the treaty were too harsh and that the treaty was being forced on Germany. Germany was not allowed to be involved in the negotiations and they were simply handed the terms and told this was what they had to sign. They had to give up parts of their military, they lost their land, they weren't allowed to join a group which was set up known as the League of Nations. Now, the League of Nations is the next part of this unit. It's an international organization which brought together different countries. It started with 42 member states in 1920. And the idea was is that it would grow and include as many countries as possible. Now, the League of Nations was one of the aims of the Allies going into the Paris Peace Talks. And they wanted this organization to be created so that there wouldn't be another war. That was the whole point of it, it was to prevent another world war. But they also had four main aims. First, to keep the peace and prevent war through improved international cooperation. Now this meant that if countries had an issue with each other, they should go to the League and the League would try and sort it out peacefully um, without having to get the army or military involved. The second aim was to facilitate disarmament. So that meant that all member countries were supposed to start reducing the amount of weapons. They also wanted to improve working and living conditions for people around the world. And finally, they wanted to help end deadly diseases around the world by improving things such as healthcare. Now, the League had to deal with lots of problems and they had varying levels of success. America decides not to join the League, which is a huge problem because America is seen as this big player in international politics at this time. And it does mean that the League is actually undermined and other countries don't take it as seriously. The League also has to deal with some big events such as the Manchurian and Abyssinian crisis, which it doesn't handle particularly well. Some historians view the League as a group who are really easy to push over and they had limited resources, which meant that they couldn't actually achieve anything when it came to preventing conflict. Their main way of dealing with, with problems was to simply talk about it 
and tell the other countries off. This wasn't necessarily going to work in all scenarios. They could have put in place um, punishment and as a last resort, they could use the military, but they didn't actually have their own army. They were reliant on the other countries to supply troops, which they were often reluctant to do so. Now, the final part of this course looks at the road to war. So Hitler comes to power in 1933 after the Great Depression had hit Germany particularly hard and erodes popular support for the central parties. The Nazis used tactics of propaganda, grassroots campaigning, so going door to door, and targeted discrimination, so picking on a particular social group and making out that all of Germany's problems were down to that particular group. Now, Hitler had many goals. Um, he wanted to undo the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. He wants to rearm Germany and restore its pride as a military nation, which is a bit of a problem because under the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, He's only restricted to a limited amount of weapons. He's not allowed to rearm. He wants to create this thing known as Lebensraum or living space for Germans to grow and expand into Eastern Europe. In order to do this, he basically has to invade other countries. Which To do that, he needs weapons and all of that goes against the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. He also wants to unite all German speaking people under one country, effectively creating a greater Germany. Again, in order to do that, he needs to invade other countries and therefore he needs weapons. He wants to destroy communism. Now, communism at this time is a huge threat. The Allies are very aware of it. And it's one of the reasons that they use the policy of appeasement to keep Hitler on side, because Hitler's effectively acting as a buffer zone between the Allied nations and Russia. Hitler also wants to remove Jewish people from Germany. He also wants to remove anybody who doesn't fit his ideal German, who doesn't fit in with his ideas around what German society should be like. So we're going to look at how Hitler tries to achieve all of those aims through a series of events which are often termed as the road to war. So we'll look at things like the Dolphus Affair, the Saar plebiscite where Hitler's gradually getting more and more land. We'll look at how he rearms in 1935, the, the remilitarization of the Rhineland, Anschluss, so the union between Germany and Austria, again, this was banned under the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. We'll look at how Hitler starts invading more and more countries until finally we hit the invasion of Poland in September 1939. So what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on this part of the course. We're going to focus on the road to war and the events which led to World War II. So you have a Google Doc which has a timeline on it for this section of the course. You need to read it through and highlight events which are to do with Germany and those that are to do with invasion. So you can use the highlighting tool like we have in previous lessons. If you have issues using the highlighting tool, you can simply code them just to note down what your code is. Now, there will be some, some events which have no colour or code and others which have two. Uh, I've done an example of each for you on the Google Doc just to get you started. Once you have done this, you then need to decide at what stage on the timeline war was inevitable. So when do you think war was always going to happen? Make sure you explain your answer and include some detail. Now, there is no right answer to this question. It is simply your opinion. You just need to be able to back it up. So while you complete this task, please press pause and ensure that you are doing it on the Google Doc. Your next task for this lesson involves looking at the second timeline on the Google Doc, which is in a little bit more detail. This timeline is focused on specific events from 1938 to 1939 in the final build up to the Second World War. For task three, you need to look at the five events and decide why these events would worry the allied countries, so Britain, France, and America. Try to write a paragraph explaining your ideas. And for task four, you're gonna use the same five events and the short YouTube clip or BBC Bite Size clip to decide if Hitler always wanted war. Now, again, this is also your opinion, so make sure you explain your ideas. Make sure you do all of this on the Google Doc provided 
please press pause while you complete this task. Now, your final task for this lesson is to complete the account question. So write an account of how Hitler's actions in 1938 to 1939 led to the outbreak of war. For this, you need to write three paragraphs explaining one event and then saying how it led to war. So for this question, we're looking at making sure that we're writing in chronological order. So we're writing in the order that the events happened. So for example, you could start paragraph one. We're talking about Hitler's actions in Austria in 1938. So you can explain what happened and then you need to say how this caused World War II. You can use the third column of that timeline to help you. Again, paragraph two, you're moving on in the timeline to describe Hitler's actions in Czechoslovakia. So you can look at the Sudeten land crisis, the Munich Peace Conference, and then falling that into Czechoslovakia in March 1939. Again, use the how it caused World War II uh, column to help you with the rest of this answer. And then your final paragraph could be on Hitler's actions in Poland. So you could look at Hitler's invasion in 1939 and Chamberlain declaring war and explain how that itself caused war. Hitler had failed to leave Poland and Britain had followed through on their promise to protect Poland rather than follow a policy of appeasement that they had been previously. Obviously, this is a shock for Hitler and he's now forced into a war. Make sure you follow a peel paragraph, so use the information on the Google Doc to help you with this. Once you have finished everything, please make sure that you submit it on the Google Classroom. If you end up doing it on paper, take a picture and email it in or submit it on the Google Doc to your teacher just so that they can check through your work. Well done for today. Please take care of yourselves and we will see you next lesson.